Hey guys, I'm just outside my house and today I'm going to talk about siding. Siding is one of those things that you don't hear people talking about very much, but it plays a really important role in designing of a resilient home, acreage and farm. Hey, my name is Rob Avis and I'm a mechanical engineer and permaculture designer. I teach permaculture design courses and I run a consulting company called Adaptive Habitat where we help people design resilient homes, acreages and farms. So this is our house in Calgary and we retrofitted it oh, probably eight years ago because it was really cold inside. Um, in fact, the walls had that old Dow Corning pink insulation which turns out only has about an R value of eight in a two by four wall. And there were some studies that came out a couple of years, maybe almost a decade ago now, that talked about how when pink insulation is exposed to temperature below minus 20, the R value drops by a factor of two. Now I can't remember the physical phenomena that they talked about with regards to why that happens. But basically, if you believe that study, then our, our wall with an R value of eight went down to an R value of three, which is explaining why our house was so cold in the wintertime. It wasn't just cold from conduction, energy being lost through conduction, it was also cold because of infiltration. The other thing that our house had was vinyl siding. And now, if you know me, you know that I cannot stand vinyl siding. Vinyl siding is basically jet fuel strapped to the side of your house. It's made out of petroleum products and if you talk to any fire agency in your city, they'll tell you that when a house goes up on fire that has vinyl or it goes up on fire and there's a house next to it that has vinyl, usually the uh, house next to the one that has fire will go up with it um, or both of them on each side because vinyl is so flammable. Not to mention when vinyl burns, it puts off tons of toxins and so people in the house with the vinyl siding can die before the fire even gets them just because of the fumes that are coming off of that vinyl. So if you have vinyl siding, consider getting rid of it. Now the other thing is that vinyl is not great for the environment um, and the um, it de generally doesn't last very long either. So um, because of this, people are having to replace it every um, three to five years and sometimes sooner depending on, on hail. Um, hail tends to be really destructive towards vinyl siding and so we get a lot of hail here and we didn't really want to have to do this siding multiple times and so we decided to opt for hardy plank. And so hardy plank is a concrete based board. It's fireproof. It lasts pretty much forever. You can repaint it over and over again and it's also pretty easy to install. And so the other thing I like about um, Hardy Plank is that it's breathable, so air can get underneath it and dry things out, as well as um, it's repaintable down the road if you ever want to change the color or re refresh the house. So it's not like that disposable vinyl siding. So if you've never heard about Hardy Plank, you might want to check it out. Um, Hardy Plank is not the only option. There's lots of other stuff that you can use, but what I would say from a principle-based perspective is you want to get a siding that's going to last for a really long time. You want something that's breathable. You want something that's going to be able to resist, especially if you live in a fire ecology where a lot of the trees around you are susceptible to burning. Um, you want something that can resist things like hail um, because all of these things are going to play into the longevity of the siding that you actually use. So um, I know that hardy plank is not the most environmentally friendly option and it's not even great for the people that are installing it because it can produce dust. That's not great for your lungs. And so it's good to think about that. Um, the other thing that is worth considering if you're looking at building science in general is a book that was written by a colleague of mine named Chris Magwood and it's Making Buildings Better. It's an incredible book. I highly, highly recommend it and I'll put it in the show notes below. So if you found this stuff interesting, uh, we teach permaculture design courses in Calgary and in Invermere, as well as in Guelph, Ontario. And we talk about resilient homes, acreages and farms, as well as food forests like the one behind me, growing your own food, producing your own energy, and generally resilience. Check us out at vergepermaculture.ca or adaptivehabitat.ca to learn more about what it is that we do.
Thank you.